Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the new series. My name is Pooja Devedi. Today we are going to discuss how rapidly melting ice of Antarctica has become a problem when it comes to the salinity and the other issues with respect to marine ecosystem. This topic is going to be extremely significant from the perspective of GS Means paper third and also from the perspective of your preliminary examination. These are the many topics that we are going to discuss step by step. The news, what are the key highlights about Antarctica, what the recent study has found, overturning a circulation of the ocean, disrupting the base of the food chain, these are all the consequences and India and Antarctica as well. Now, rapidly melting Antarctica ice is dramatically slowing down the flow of water through the world's ocean. It is slowing down the circulation of water. We will know about it as well. This could have a disastrous serious impact on the global climate, the marine life and marine food chain, even the stability of the ice shelves. Now let's know about Antarctica. It is uninhabited. Generally people do not live there. Except for those manning the 40 permanent stations which are established by several countries including India for scientific research. It is, Earth's, it is the Earth's southernmost continent and it contains geographic, geographic South Pole, here it is. And it is situated in the Antarctic region of the Southern Hemisphere. The expanse is 14,000 square kilometers and it is the fifth largest continent. Many important seas surround it such as the Weddell Sea, Ross Sea and important glaciers are also there. Thwaites Glacier, Mount Winson is there. And also, Vostok Station is, is uh, here only. King George Island is over here. And these are the important things that could be asked in your examination. What is the study about? Let's talk about that. Now, it is saying that as because of the global warming, the temperatures are rising. That makes the fresh water from the Antarctic melting ice to enter into the ocean. Now, of course, when we know that the fresh water is going to enter into the ocean, the salinity will come down, the salt level will come down. It will reduce the salinity and hence the density of the water. The, there will be a change in the density as well. That will diminish the downward flow to the sea's bottom as dense water moves down and lighter water moves up. While past research has looked at what could happen to similar overturning circulation in the North Atlantic, less has been done on Antarctic bottom water circulation. Now this study will show us that. Now, the overturning circulation of oceans, it is driven by the movement of denser water towards the sea floor and salinity increases the density. That, now, this dense water, it was rich in heat, carbon, oxygen and vital nutrients that is needed by the marine life that is not getting it because it is at the bottom or the base of the ocean. This water was very important. Now, deep ocean water flows, the, uh, flows from the Antarctic. This could decline by 40% by 2050 and this has been published by the journal Nature. Scientists have come, uh, come up with Scientists have driven themselves to this conclusion by relying on around 35 million computing hours over two years. And they found deep water circulation in the Antarctic and that could weaken at twice the rate of decline in the North Atlantic, which is not very good news moving ahead now there are the consequences the effect of meltwater on global ocean circulation it has not been included in any of the ipcc reports uh, by using any complex models but it is going to be considerable whatever the change it is going to be ocean overturning allows nutrients to rise up from the bottom and that is very important for the phytoplanktons these phytoplanktons are the base of the food chain if these get disturbed every other species will also be disturbed. So, it will distort the entire food web or the food chain. The study's finding also suggests that ocean would not be able to absorb as much carbon dioxide as the upper layers have become more stratified because of the fresh water. It will leave more CO2 in the atmosphere. So, carbon sequestration will also not be happening. The study showed that warm water intrusion in the western Antarctic ice shelf would also increase and uh, but it did not look at how this might create a feedback effect and generate even more melting feedback effect in what is actually happening as an interaction between the important significant forces. The Indian Antarctic program is a multidisciplinary, multi-institutional program. That means it will study many disciplines through many other agencies. 
National Center for Antarctic and Ocean Research Ministry of Earth Science looks after it. India officially acceded to Antarctic Treaty System in August 1983. It maintains two research stations on the continent, which is Maitri, which was committed in 1989. Then we have, it is at the Shirmachit Hills and Bharati at Larseman Hills. This is an important preliminary fact. You can look at this. Moving on. It has also launched 41, India has also launched 41 scientific expeditions every year thus far. Together with Himadri Station in Svalbard above the Arctic Circle, India is among those elite group of countries with multiple research stations in this polar region. Okay, moving on. If we talk about Antarctic Treaty, it is or it is uh, basically a treaty to preserve Antarctic. It is say it is saying that Antarctic is all of the land and ice shelves which is south of the 60 degree latitude. Antarctic Treaty is the only example of a single treaty that governs a whole continent. Signatories include Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Chile, France, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, South Africa is also a part of it, and the Union of Soviet uh, Socialist Republic, that is Russia, and UK and US. Currently, there are 54 members, including India, and the headquarters is in Buenos Aires. So, I hope you understood this entire topic in brief. That's it. Thank you so much for watching.